Your face, Lord, I will seek toward the theology of the face of God. By Yiji Muscala, read by Matthew Hall. Yiji Muscala, THD, PhD, is Professor of Old Testament Exegesis and Theology and Dean of the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary, Andrews University, Berrien Springs, Michigan, United States. At the center of Psalm 27, David responds to God's appeal, quote, Seek my face, verse 8, ESV, by promising, quote, Your face, Lord, I will seek, end quote, verse 8. David's firm decision puts the notion of God's face at the heart of a chiastic literary structure of this psalm. He explains why he desires to look at God's face, quote, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him, end quote, verse 4, and to, quote, see the goodness of the Lord, end quote, verse 13. Ancient philosophers have long attested that beauty, truth and goodness form the foundational triad of human life. They are basic qualities of our existence. David could not imagine life without God, and so he asks the Lord, quote, Do not hide your face from me. End quote. Verse 9. The apex of his prayer is connected to his personal trust in God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 1, ESV David's words lead us to this fundamental question. What is so significant in David seeking or seeing the face of God? The short answer is that he wants to see the beauty of God's character, the truth about him and his goodness. The face of God the Hebrew term panim, always plural, has two main meanings in the context of our study. One, face, and two, presence, which explains why translators render the same biblical text differently. Some speak about God's presence, and others translate it more literally as God's face. The word panim comes with a plethora of additional meanings, such as before, in front of, surface, person, and appears 2,140 times in the Hebrew Bible. The Greek equivalent is prosopon, occurring 76 times in the New Testament. It also has the same two basic meanings. The biblical narrative of the creation of Adam contains implied imagery of God's face, which suggests the first thing that Adam saw when he opened his eyes was the face of God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Adam was in the presence of God, in a close relationship with a divine person. Adam's existence began by seeing the face of God. It was a face-to-face -face encounter. The warmness of the imagery alludes the loving relationship between them. For us too, seeing God's face should be an integral part of our walk with the Lord because humans were created to live in close relationship with him and in dependence on him. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to chapter 2 verse 3. But sin broke this relationship, and instead fear, guilt, and shame followed. After eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve hid and fled from God's presence. Genesis chapter 3 verses 7 through 10. In the priestly Aaronic blessing, God's face is mentioned twice. It was the most desirable thing. Quote, the Lord bless you. The Lord makes his face shine on you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. End quote. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. God's shining and turning his face toward his people expresses joy and shows acceptance, favor, respect, and forgiveness. Many psalms attest to the same fundamental truth. Quote, Let the light of your face shine on us. End quote. Psalms chapter 4 verse 6. In the New Living Translation, this verse states, quote, Let your face smile on us, Lord. 
end quote. We need this smile of God because God's smile on us enables us to smile on each other. David could not imagine life without this favour. Quote, How long will you hide your face from me? End quote. Psalms chapter 13 verse 1 ESV In Psalm 11, he culminates his thought with the affirmation that quote, the upright shall behold his, the Lord's face, end quote. Verse 7, ESV. God said to Solomon, quote, If my people humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. End quote. 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, ESV. To seek God's face means to search his favour and gracious intervention. Quote, now there was a famine, David sought the face of the Lord. End quote. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 1, ESV. In this search, repentance, petitions, fasting, and praises are included. Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 Because seeking God's face must go hand in hand with total dedication to God. To appear before God's face points to visiting the sanctuary. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 11 Isaiah chapter 1 verse 12 But, quote, no one is to appear before me. Lit see my face, empty-handed. End quote. Exodus chapter 23 verse 15 chapter 34 verse 20 Thus the face of God appears in the context of expectations and hopes that God will be with his people, change their situation and bless them. Jacob, Esau and God's face The story of Jacob wrestling with a stranger and then meeting with his brother Esau is very illuminating because the whole narrative of Genesis 32 and 33 is composed around the key word face. The Hebrew text literally states that Jacob was fleeing from the face of his brother Esau. Genesis chapter 35 verse 1 Thus, the face means a person here. The image of Esau haunted Jacob for twenty years. During this time, he never visited his native lands, his parents, or reconciled with Esau. But before Jacob could meet his brother, he needed to meet with his God. Before he saw the face of his brother again, he had to see the face of God. The word face appears in these two chapters in crucial places, testifying to its significance. This expression appears four times in in just one verse, yet English translations usually do not catch the textual interplay with this word. A literal translation highlights Jacob's thoughts. I will cover his face with these gifts that go before my face, and afterward, when I see his face, perhaps he will lift up my face. Genesis chapter 32 verse 20 Jacob wanted to blind, that is, appease, pacify, or calm, Esau's anger, thus literally covering Esau's face with extravagant gifts so that Esau would not see and remember the wrong that Jacob did to him. The many presents were his attempt to change Esau's attitude toward him. The idiomatic phrase to lift up one's face means to favorably accept, to be kind, to forgive, to be friendly, to receive another person. Jacob then wrestled with a man Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, in whom he recognized a divine person. From a Christian perspective, this person is identified with the pre-incarnated Christ. This is why he calls the place Peniel, which means the face of God in Hebrew, and reasoned, quote, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. End quote. Verse 30. What did Jacob read in the face of God? God gave him a new name and blessed him. Verses 26 through 29 Later that morning, as his brother was approaching him, Jacob went forward to meet him by bowing down to Esau seven times. Genesis chapter 33 verse 3 Because Jacob first humbled himself before God, 
he was now able to humble himself before his brother, and Esau graciously accepted him. In that moment of reconciliation, verse 4, Jacob burst into a special recognition. According to Genesis chapter 33, verse 10, Jacob confesses that he sees God's face in Esau. Quote, If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God. End quote. What was Jacob reading in the face of his brother? The same expressions of love, compassion, forgiveness, and grace that he saw in the face of God earlier. God's smile on Jacob is reflected in Esau's acceptance of his returning brother. What do people read in our faces when they interact with us? Why do we need to seek God's face? 1. The face of God gives assurance of his presence. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15, Matthew chapter 28 verse 20, Acts chapter 18 verse 10. The face of God provides emotional stability and balance in a world of loneliness, anxiety and fear. Someone loves, cares for and protects me. John chapter 14 verse 27, Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. 3. The face of God leads and guides. Exodus chapter 33 verse 15. 4. The face of God brings intellectual strength because we can rely on God's infinite wisdom and counsel. Psalms chapter 73 verse 23 and 24. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 7. 5. God's presence brings prosperity and success for accomplishing His will, mission, and purpose. He enables His people to be His faithful witnesses. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. 6. Seeing the face of God by the inner sight of faith is the key to a victorious life. Psalms chapter 16 verse 8. 7. The face of God brings endurance and perseverance. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 8. The face of God gives us a sense of identity. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 Chapter 43 verse 1 Galatians chapter 3 Verses 26 through 29, chapter 4, verse 5, 1 John, chapter 3, verse 1. 9. The face of God means that He watches over us, speaks to us, and hears our prayers. Psalms, chapter 32, verse 8, chapter 33, verse 18. 10. Seeing the face of God transforms lives. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 18. Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Jesus proclaimed, quote, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. End quote. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 8. The redeemed, as the inhabitants of the new Jerusalem, will delight in seeing God's face. True believers will constantly behold his countenance and this face-to-face -face encounter will be their highest and ultimate experience. John describes it in celebratory language, quote, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Revelation chapter 22, verse 3 and 4, NKJV. This promise of seeing God's face is the most fascinating picture regarding the closeness of the redeemed with God. They will live forever and rejoice in His presence. His presence will be permanently with them, so they will not need to seek His face. They will gaze upon the splendor and majesty of the Lord, His full glory. And the more they know their King and Lord, the more they will be thrilled to serve, obey, and worship Him. Each day, throughout all eternity will bring new discoveries of God's goodness, brilliance, and the grandeur of His character of love. 
For bibliographical and biblical references on this article and for much more content for pastors and church leaders, please visit ministrymagazine.org.